an instrumental figure from Corsica who took full advantage of the revolutionary ongoings on the mainland, had met his fate in 1815, at the Battle of Waterloo. But what if he won? Hmm. With his military campaigns that started off in Italy, which then continued in Egypt and present-day Germany, Napoleon was a thorn in the eye to any other European power. So much so, that they needed a handful of imperial coalitions to put a stop to his victorious ways. Each time the opponents were at Napoleon's mercy, they had to cede land to his growing empire, restructure, get some more help and go again at a later date and a different place. After 19 years of rising military ranks and etching his name in European history, the Battle of Waterloo in 1815 marked his military finale that put a nail in his coffin. In Duke Wellington and Gebhard Leverek von Blücher, he had found his match, and he paid for it, dearingly. In this short video, we will go through three different scenarios, each with supporting and weakening arguments, to find an answer to this question you might have never asked yourself. But you have. Or else you wouldn't be here. During his nine month and 21 days of exile, Europe underwent a major political shift. The Congress of Vienna had redrawn European borders and had reintroduced the Bourbon rule. The French had lost a lot of territory to a lot of factions. The latter consequences actually caused widespread dissatisfaction. Liberal and nationalist sentiments were growing, demanding greater political participation, national self-determination, and opposition to the conservative order established by the Congress of Vienna. With a victory at Waterloo, Napoleon would have likely consolidated his power over Europe once again. He might have re-established control over territories lost during his exile, such as Belgium and the Netherlands, and expanded French influence in other regions. Control would have occurred in the forms of accelerated reforms and modernizations, such as a centralized government, codification of laws, infrastructure development, and further industrialization. The Battle of Waterloo was won by the seventh coalition of the remaining major powers in Central Europe. A handful of coalitions had failed to make Napoleon budge in his expansionist campaigns, and each time, they put up a defense. Wow. They couldn't recuse themselves, since expansionism in its very nature would have affected their own territory. Duh. Thus, this was going to go on for as far as Napoleon did. Had he been victorious at Waterloo, it is possible that new coalitions or resistance movements would have had to form to challenge his dominance, leading to further military conflicts and wars. Another cause for conflict could have also stemmed from the colonial relationships both parties had at the time. French control over colonies in Africa, the Caribbean, and other regions might have been strengthened, altering the dynamics of European colonial competition. Though the same can be said about the opposite side of things. It's conflict nonetheless, what it spoils down to, every time. Currently, you can't deny that Napoleon left a lasting legacy. But the Napoleonic Code, though amended multiple times throughout history's legislation, is still in force in a great number of countries across the world. It marked the abolition of the previous patchwork of feudal laws that were doomed to fail in a modernizing and independent world. A prolonged and successful reign by Napoleon could have shaped the perception of his rule and legacy. It's possible that his achievements and reforms would have been viewed more favorably, overshadowing the darker aspects of his autocratic rule. These would include, among other aspects, the repression of political dissent, limitations on various individual liberties, economic exploitation and the overall human toll an imperialist government would demand.